Hello, this is Gernge with another quick tip video. Today we'll cover the ThinFilm Inheritance OSL node. ThinFilm is the cool color shimmering or iridescent look on things like soap bubbles or oil. The effect is built into the standard surface material in Redshift, but this OSL version is much more versatile in my opinion, so I like it. We'll be looking at this credit card example and combining the ThinFilm with a Redshift Tiles node to create some cool color patterns and variations. We'll also be comparing this to the thin film that's built into the standard surface redshift material. So let's start things off with that comparison. I've got a simple credit card asset here. There's a background psych with a little ring pattern made using the redshift tiles node and a dome light HDRI. Very, very straightforward inside of the credit card material too. It's just the base color, metal, roughness, and bump textures. Okay, so let's come into the standard surface and scroll down to the thin film section and raise up the parameters a bit. Playing out with these settings and trying out a variety of different combinations, we can see that this effect is rather hard to tell if anything's happening. The settings are probably rather realistic, but I like using this effect in stylized and really obvious ways, so we're gonna remove it for now. Hopping back over to the Redshift OSL repository on GitHub, We'll grab the ThinFilm Inheritance OSL code and copy it. Then back in Redshift, make the OSL node and paste the code in place. Once compiled, we see it has a few sections worth of parameters, but I find the best way to get a sense of what's going on is to solo the node and start messing around with the parameters. Panning our camera around, we can see it's starting to react to our camera angle, which is awesome. This also means we can rotate the object or animate it to see the color shimmer. Great. Let's explore some of these parameters. Now, I'm not going to pretend to really know what's going on with all of these, but that's completely all right. The effect looks cool, and that's the important part. There are a few layers and thickness parameters, which is most of what I focus on. This is a generalization, but from what I can tell, lower thickness values will appear to spread out the color gradient, and higher thickness values will bring the color gradient closer together. We can see this very clearly starting the thickness value at 0.1, then shift clicking the amount upwards towards 5. Now panning around, we get much more of a vibrant rainbow color effect, which is what I'm going after in this case. Moving down to the bottom of the settings, we have IOR of environment. As we bring this value down from the 100% white color towards 0% black, we can see the color saturation lowering until we're left with just a white color, which effectively is turning off the node. Let's set that back to its default and layer this node into the material and actually get things to work. If we wanna keep the strength of this subtle, we can connect the thin film OSL to the coding color of the material, then bring up the coding strength. This will be a close approximate to using the built-in thin film node, but of course more controllable since we've got more parameters. Looking around, it's still rather subtle in this case, so let's push things further and layer this into the diffuse color, because we're going to go for something really artsy and bold. Now, depending on the base color or diffuse color of the object you're working with, you can experiment with different blending modes and see what works best for you. I think I like the look of a difference blending mode here, and things are looking really vibrant. Although, I want to use a scalar ramp to mask away the color effect since it's blocking the text and branding logo in my particular credit card. Since this thin film OSL has a variety of inputs, let's finish things off and have some fun. I'm going to create a Redshift Tiles node, configuring the Tiles node to have some brighter colors, then much smaller scale and width for the lines in between, since our credit card is a rather small object and connect this to the IOR environment slot on the thin film. Again, we can think of this input as a mask for the color shifting effect. Now we can just sort of flip through the various tile patterns and make something really slick and fancy looking. Hopefully from here, you can imagine some ways of putting the thin film and maybe the tiles node to use in your own projects. I've used this to replicate or enhance the look of microchips, camera sensors, multiple financial and digital coin assets. I've also layered this effect into car headlight glass and onto phone screens as examples. That's a variety of techie stuff, but of course you're free to layer this node into any material you're working with. 
And since this node has a great set of inputs and outputs, you can really connect it to anything. That will wrap things up for this quick tip video. I hope now that you're becoming more comfortable thinking about OSL nodes and seeing how useful they can be. I have other quick tip videos using various OSL nodes for parallax occlusion bump mapping and for scattering random textures, if you'd like to check those out too and use the power of OSL for more things. And as always, thank you so much for watching.